Let's do one, two, three. Ouch. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name's Dr. James Gill and uh, you've joined me for something slightly different today. As those of you who have watched our brief experimentation with YouTube Shorts, you'll know that unfortunately Covid hit my household recently. But we're a couple of weeks down the line from that and I still have questions, particularly given the fact that I didn't come down with Covid and all of my lateral flow tests and crucially my PCRs remain negative. Now, we're all very aware of the lateral flow tests, and I think that just about everybody is probably sick to the back teeth of them. And they are a useful screening tool to identify people that didn't have COVID to allow them to go to work. So with the lateral flow test, we've cranked the specificity so high that they are very reliable at detecting a true negative i.e. you don't have the virus. The consequence of that is that they are slightly less um, sensitive and that's about diagnosing a true positive, i.e. you do have um, an infection. Which is why if somebody had symptoms, because the lateral flow test is less effective at diagnosing the presence of COVID, we would direct people to do a PCR test. So, in our household, uh, Beth, my other half, she had the symptoms, she had a positive lateral flow test, and we confirmed this by getting a PCR test, at which point we basically hermetically sealed her in the bedroom. I have not had a positive lateral flow test, so we are believing that the specificity of these tests is accurate and that they are showing a true negative, i.e. I haven't had the virus. I've also had PCR tests, many of them, all of which have been negative, again, showing lack of virus. But that has left a question in my head. How has my other half, who you know, I've lived in the same house with when she became positive, how has she had COVID and I haven't? How have I seen many, many patients and worked in the COVID clinics and not had a positive test? Now, I have had my vaccines, including the booster. So the sensible solution is that I have been exposed to the virus and I have been protected by the vaccines and hopefully have developed my own immune response as well. But I don't know that. And I'm intrigued. Have I had the vaccines and have I actually just been really, really careful and not had contact with the virus? Or have I had the vaccines? Have I been protected and not had an infection? Bear in mind, you can be exposed to something but you don't become infected until your cells have been invaded and the cell um, mechanism has been taken over and you're replicating out of control the virus within and it's spreading within you. Then you have an infection. So it's a little bit like um, finding a rat in the garage. I have a rat in the garage. Does that mean I have an infestation, an infection of rats? Probably not. That rat could have just wandered in from the woodland. However, I could have nests and nests of rats living in the garage and making it their home there. That, as well as an infestation, would be an infection of rats. So the question is, was I ever infected with rats, or COVID, or was I simply exposed? But today, we're going to be looking at a slightly different thing, the SARS-CoV-2 combined antibody testing kit. Now this is a blood test more than a, um, an antigen test. So the lateral flow test is simply um, looking for COVID antigens. Um, is there any evidence of the virus in my nose or in my throat, which an antibody bound to uh, this test is um, adhering to bring the positive line. This is a slightly different test. This is a blood test and it will take a couple of drops of my blood and we'll see what antibodies are in it, whether or not I have the IgM antibody that's seen in an acute infection, 
whether or not I have the IgG antibody that is seen in a prior infection, or crucially, do I have the neutralizing antibodies? So it'll be very interesting to see what uh, this comes up with. So with that in mind, let's uh, open the packet and have a go. So let's have a look what's within. So we've got our water, or our diluent, should I say. We've got our instruction booklet. We've got the actual test itself. We've got our alcohol pad and our mini instructions. And most importantly, probably, we've got our sharp that we're going to be using to get the blood from the fingers. So in terms of this antibody test, inside is a little pipette. I'm going to use the sharp to uh, draw the blood from my finger, take it up in the pipette, and then I need to put different drops of blood on the different wells. For the IgM, IgG, have I been exposed to the virus, I'm going to put one drop of blood on there. For the uh, neutralizing antibody, I need to put three drops of blood on there. And then we've got five potential lines that can come up that will tell me what uh, is going on within my body. So with that in mind, let's uh, get the blood flowing and get the test started. Okay, so with hands washed, let's get into this. So let's sort out our test. Okay. So we've got our antibodies on this side for the IgM, IgG, and we've got the neutralizing antibodies on the side. So we've got our needle stick. I need to alcohol my finger. Okay, actually, let's not do my index finger because I use that. Okay, and we're going to take off the um, scratch bit. So don't apply to the pulp of your finger. Any test like this should be done on the outer aspect. And we're going to do one, two, three. Ouch. Okay, so we've got a good lancet bleed there. Okay, there we go. We give that a nice squeeze. There's the blood. And we're just going to collect that up in the dropper. Okay. Got a horrible feeling this is going to coagulate. So let's do this quickly. So we're going to confirm on our chart. So we're doing one drop whenever it comes through. Where's my drops? Splat, splat, splat. There we go. That's on one side. And we're going to do three drops over here. That's certainly not enough. So we're just going to see if I can get some more in. Okay, and then before this dries, we need to get out the diluent. And I want three drops over here. One, two, three, and then we want one over here. Right. Oh, and we can see right away that things are running along nicely. Just in case there was any doubt, these are not the normal ways that we take blood at work. And I must confess, uh, I don't think it was that great a way of doing it, but still, we'll see if we can get a result out. So one of the things that is very important with this test is that we let it develop for the full 15 minutes, but also read it before it gets to 20, um, because that can result in an inaccurate um, result. Okay, so we're 11 minutes 59 into it, so nearly there, and I've got definitely um, positive C and a weak T there, and I've got a very strong C and a very faint G underneath it. I'm not sure if you can make that out there, but it is there. So to my mind, that is suggesting Ig uh, G positive, IgM negative, and antibody positive. The other way of reading this would be everything negative, which would be a little bit unfortunate. I'd definitely say there's a very thin G coming out there, but it isn't strong, that's for sure. And that's, a thir and that's 13 minutes in. So in terms of the antibodies that we can see there, IgM, that rises between sort of 
10 to 20 days, sometimes a little bit earlier. And that would make sense in what we've seen here, that the red line for IgM is beginning to fade, given that it's been at least two weeks now since Beth um, came out of isolation, let alone had the infection. Perhaps it would have been more interesting if I'd done this test beforehand. Conversely, the presence of the IgG certainly shows that I have uh, been exposed to the virus before and have generated and still am able to mount an immune response. The um, uh, neutralizing antibody obviously is there because I've had the um, vaccine. So on that side of things, it's useful, but I do wish that this um, test had been a little bit clearer cut. Um, you know, as we've seen, I'm slightly colorblind, and even when it comes to dealing with urine dipsticks with the various colors, I don't like having to determine is that this color or that color. I much prefer nice, straightforward numbers. Unfortunately, that's not possible with an at-home test like this. So to wrap up this video, um, be careful of the stuff you buy online. Sometimes actually working out if it's any good can be quite difficult. But also, I think in my case, it shows the importance of the neutralizing antibodies that we see from the vaccine in terms of protecting people. So I did get exposed to Beth's um, um, COVID, but it looks like I had the protection from the antibodies. So what is a neutralizing antibody? Well, in the case of um, COVID-19, this is a, 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 an antibody that specifically binds to the spike protein. Now the spike protein, they're the things that give corona its name, as the spikes look like the, the points on a crown. By blocking this spike protein, the virus is unable to infect our cells and thus get in. And that's where the antibodies have some of their effect. They're going to prevent infection in some people, and it appears I've been one of those lucky individuals, but they're also going to reduce the severity of the infection, which appears to have been the case with Beth, reducing the viral load and preventing the virus running unchecked inside the body. Well, I hope this overview of um, Ig antibodies and the at-home test has been useful. Um, Drop us a line, uh, line down below um, with any questions and comments. And as ever, please, please uh, get your vaccines if you're eligible. Um, I know that literally this has stopped me getting an infection. And I know that um, Beth has been much, much um, better in dealing with the COVID um, than she would have been early on in the pandemic if she'd been infected then. So with that in mind, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.